Welcome back, folks, for a new episode of Leaked. And today we'll cover the OIs of Tier 7 and Tier 8 of the upcoming Japanese Heavy Tank Line branch that's likely released in the 9.10 patch. Now, if you haven't watched my previous Leaked video about the Mitos of Tier 5 and Tier 6, I highly recommend you watching it by clicking the link below because I won't go into that much detail about the Japanese heavy tank design history again. It gets repetitive and I get my words mixed up, so go watch that first. But for today, we'll cover the OI-100 at Tier 7 and the OI-120 at Tier 8. So the OI is a second round prototype after the first round failure. The first round consists of the Type 96 Irokaro and the Mito tanks. The Mitos were not that effective based on the suspension so the whole idea was dropped and the heavy tank design was a failure later on in 1944 after looking at the mouse tank the japanese rekindled their heavy tank design so they took the type 96 irokaro modified the suspension gave it a bigger gun and that's the oi 100 at tier 7. later on they shifted the mini turrets putting one more at the back end and give it even better modifications to the gun barrel and named it the OI-120 with more armor. So that's the tier 7 and tier 8 of the new Japanese heavy tank line branch. And here is the OI-100 at tier 7. It is a modification to the Type 96 Aerocaro tank. They give it a better suspension, thicker armor plates, and a bigger gun for the main turret, 120mm as opposed to 105. But here is a comparison with the Tiger 1 of the same tier. It's a lot bigger than the Tiger 1 almost twice in length Jesus almost two tigers in here <laughs> but taller too so this tank is a totally magnet it will attract a lot of scumbags because of the health and the area of the vehicle now here's the comparison with the E100 fat man what is interesting is that the E100 can overmatch roof armors of a few tanks like the IS-4 or the IS-7 by shooting at the cupolas from top of the turret so they shoot downwards. This tank is even taller than the E100. So this tank could overmatch roof armors of T-29s if they want to and face hug. That's pretty crazy. But it's bigger than the E100 so this tank is super huge castle of a tank now i don't have the hd renders of the oi 100 or the 120 because they have not released it yet it would be funny if they just released it right after i post this video so i would look like a total jackass <laughs> but here is the collision models as well as the non-texture models as you can see the oi has very decent frontal armor 200 millimeters sloped so it's like a porsche tiger but as sloping to the armor, give it more effective, about 230-ish, 220-ish. Whereas the Porsche Tiger is flat, 200. So this tank has better armor than the Porsche Tiger at tier 7. 200 millimeters is very tough to get through for a tier 7 tank. It's hard to get through for a tier 8, but could be done. It's okay for a tier 9 caliber gun. So this tank has decent armor. Now the turret front doesn't have that big of a mantlet, so don't expect it to bounce a lot, uh, bounce a lot of shells. But it does have 220 millimeters, so it could be a rough time getting through the front end of the turret. You do have roundedness of the mini turrets to help you bounce a few shots, but they are still flat on the front end, and the lower plate is pretty big, so angle this vehicle if you can. What is interesting is that you can see. A peak of weak armor underneath the main hull. So underneath this side armor for the main hull, this is 30 millimeters right here, about 30-ish, 20-ish. So this part of the tank is very weak, but it is covered up by a space armor side skirts right here. So side scraping for this tank is not that good because it's only 70 millimeters on the side armor. So this tank doesn't have the crazy good 90 millimeters or above like the kv3 so this tank is not that good at side scraping but don't doubt it it could do it side of the turret is decent 150 and the rear of the armor is 150 
so the rear and front of this tank is well protected. Then the side armor, the side armor is not that great. So as you can see, here is the 30-ish millimeters of the side plates exposed. Still cover up by some of the space armor, but yeah, don't rely on it. So that kind of sucks. Here are the main stats for the OI-100. It is a tier 7 vehicle. It has 1,550 health. That's the highest health of tier 7 heavy tank. 50 more than the Tiger 1 or the FV-201. So this tank has a lot of health. Not that crazy amount of health, like uh, 1700. That would be crazy, but it's okay. Decent. Engine power is 12,000 horsepower. The same engine. All of these engines has 12, 12,000, 1200 horsepower. Does that mean we don't have to research engines for these vehicles? I don't know, but 1200 horsepower is like the main staple of Japanese heavy tanks so okay weight about 101 tons so it's very heavy power to weight ratio is not bad almost 12 like the Mito 100 so this tank could rev up pretty quickly top speed is 25 kilometers per hour reverse is 10 so decent ish in terms of speed it's better than the Black Prince so it's a little bit faster by 5 kilometers but this thing is like a Black Prince. The power to weight ratio is almost the same as a Black Prince. So that's quite interesting. Hull traverse is only 20 degrees per second. That's kind of slow. Turret traverse is only 19 degrees per second. So it's like a Rumtail Borsig or a Waffentrager Panzer IV. The turret does not turn that fast. So don't get flanked. Terrain resistance is above average from what I could remember 1.1 for hard, 1.2 for medium, and 1.8 for soft. That's above average. View range is 380 meters, which is decent enough, so above average. Radio range is below average, 570 meters, so it's not that good of a radio, but you're a frontline tank, so I guess you can handle it. All armor is 175 at the front. 70-ish at the sides, 150-ish at the rear. So it's 200 millimeters somewhere on this vehicle. Likely the mantlet, quasi mantlet on the mini turrets as well as the around the main turret guns. But 175 millimeters? That's surprising. It looks like 200 millimeters. So we have to examine this whenever the model came out. But all right, 175 millimeter is almost the same sloped as 200 millimeters unsloped so this is like a porsche tiger angle it a little bit and you can have about 220 ish millimeters effective not that bad turret armor is 200 millimeters at the front 150 at the sides 150 at the rear so the turret is strong could bounce a lot of shells and most tier 7 guns could not penetrate the turret so that's decent however if you meet up with 250-ish millimeters of penetration. The turret is not going to stand up against those guns. So, yeah. Main gun is 120 millimeter. Has 190-ish millimeters of penetration. Damage is 330. Rate of fire is about 6 rounds per minute with the gun rammer and vents. DPM is 1,900 or so. Yeah. Average, okay. Reloads every 10 seconds with the gun rammer. Accuracy is okay, 0 0.38. Aim time is quite long, 3.07 seconds. Gun depression is 10 degrees, so you can overmatch roof armor. And 20 degrees of gun elevation. This tank is... Average? I mean, it has the power to weight ratio that of the Mito 100. If you have watched my previous leaked video, the Mito 100 could go ramming like a KV-5. So this tank could be a KV-5 at tier 7 as well. It doesn't have the 150 tons, that's the Mito 150, but has the same engine as those tanks, so a better horsepower per ton ratio. The Traverse is not that good though. Below average Traverse, whereas the Mito 100 has above average Traverse. So this tank has a mixture of the armor from the Mito 150 combined with the speed-ish of the Mito 100. That's quite interesting. Now let's compare with the average stat. 
a better average stat than my brain could tell me with the tank inspector. So here's the Porsche Tiger. We can compare the mobility first. So the average mobility of a tier 7 heavy tank is 12.4. So this tank has just about the same mobility on average of a tier 7 heavy. So that's quite decent for such a huge vehicle. Has way above average health by 150. So this has the most health of a tier 7 heavy. Traverse is below average by 7 degrees for the hull. Almost 8 degrees for the hull. Turret traverse is almost 11 or never mind 9 degrees less than the average so it doesn't turn that fast like a Ramto Borsig as I said. Terrain resistance is surprisingly below average for the hard surfaces but above average for the medium and soft so it's still quite decent okay never mind above average view range that's good above or below average radio range it's still decent it's better than the Russians in my opinion the Russians have about 500 to 600 ish or 400 ish on the IS I think so that gotta suck but okay mobility is not that bad not that bad so it could ram and don't get rammed by this thing because it has 12 horsepower per ton ratio so this thing could shift surprisingly could shift here's the gun it has uh, above average penetration by seven millimeters that's good alpha is above average that's good dpm is below average but not much by 50 so on par okay aim time is way below average by 0 0.3 seconds so it takes some time to aim accuracy is below average by 0 0.01 so not that much but you do have 10 degrees of gun depression with 20 degrees of gun elevation so eh, you could overmatch roof armors that of the t29 if you want to you could face hug those tanks what is surprising is that i thought it's 200 millimeters for the hull armor not 175 it's it's a different scope if you're gonna put 175 for the main hull armor than 200 millimeters whereas 200 millimeters is like a porsche tiger and will bounce uh, bounce a lot of shots 175 millimeters sloped not that well sloped but sloped could bounce a few shots it will bounce the 122 millimeters from the russians it will probably bounce the 88 millimeters of the tigers probably the 105 millimeters of the americans okay fine the armor is decent against same tier guns but against like 155 millimeters of tier eights the frontal armor will not last long so unless you're sloped and at least 300 meters away so this tank could ram if you want to surprisingly it's like playing with the Mito 100 with more armor at tier 7 but the traverse is not that good so you can only ram in a straight line like a rhino instead of stampede but I mean, like a zebra stampede whatever so analogy sucks but this tank could ram has the armor not that good of armor on the turret though so it's a bully at tier 7 bully it's a bully okay on to the oi 120 and here is the oi 120 at tier 8 it is a modification to the oi 100 a little bit thicker armor better selection of weapons so it is very big vehicle it's the same size if not bigger than the oi 100 the mini turrets got shifted around the frontal hull armor got better sloping on the upper plate but yeah, it's very big. And the FCM 50T is not that small of a vehicle. So here's the comparison with the Tiger 2. <laughs> Dwarfs in comparison. It's very long as well. And with a lot of area for artillery hits. So that's a big arty magnet. Now you might notice that this gun is a little bit derpy. It is a 150mm derp cannon, 
So this tank could wield a derp gun like the KV-2 or a E-100. Here's the collision model with the non-textured earlier models of the OI-120. As you can see, the upper plate is well sloped, but not as thick as the non-slope parts of the hull. It's about 105 to 130 ish millimeters, so it's well sloped. It could bounce a few shots if you angle it, but yeah, it's like a Carnarvon's upper plate. The unsloped parts of this vehicle is about 200 to 220, so it's like a Porsche Tiger ish at tier 8. Fernand at tier 8, if you will. The turret is well armored, about 220 ish, with roundliness of the mini turrets cover up most of the front end of the main turret. The mantlet is not that big, don't expect it to protect you. The sloping on the turret does help, but it's 45 degrees, not as crazy as, you know, 30 ish degrees backwards. So you can bounce a few shots. Effective armor should be about 250 with 220 millimeters as the main plating. It does have side skirts to protect the main tracks. Side armor is about 105 millimeters. It's better than the 70 on the OI-100, but not as thick. Engine deck got reduced in size, so saves up on the weight. Side of the turret is well armored, as well as the rear. So the turret is very strong. The rear of this tank is well armored, but Engine deck is exposed and it's low to the ground. So if you have a tank that's high in size or tallness, you can overmatch the engine deck and shoot downwards into it. So, alrighty, it's like a Tetris shape, more like the Mitos of the tier fives and tier six. So here are the main stats. It is tier eight heavy tank has 1700 hit points, which is way above average. Engine power is 1200 horsepower. Again, it weighs 120 ish tons. So, power to weight ratio is about 9.9. .9. It is not as terrible as the Mito 150, which has about 8 horsepower per ton ratio. So, this is around the same levels as an E100 or a mouse, but it is still pretty sluggish. Top speed is 25 kilometers per hour, reverse is 10, hull traverse is 19 degrees per second. That's very slow. Turret traverse is 21 degrees per second. That's mediocre, too slow. So it doesn't turn very fast. And if it get flanked, it's the end of it. So don't get flanked. Terrain resistance is 0 .0, uh, 1.05 for hard, 1.15 for medium, 1.9 for soft. Above average, I believe. View range is the same, 380 meters, which is below average. About average, 390 would be preferred. Radio range is about standard for high tiers, so 700 plus. Hull armor is 200 millimeters at the front. That's for the non-sloped parts. 105 for the sides and 150 for the rear. Turret armor is 200 millimeters all the way around, so the turret is thick enough and well slope-ish for up to 220 millimeters effective. The main gun is 120 millimeter. It penetrates up to 190 millimeters, so the same as the tier seven version. Deals 330 damage. DPM is about 2,000 ish, with gun rammer or so. So it's the same uh, same weapon as the tier seven version. It's like a copy of the T29. Okay, reloads every 10 seconds with the gun rammer. Not as accurate though, 0 0.4 for accuracy. Aim time is a little bit better, 2.97 seconds. Gun depression is 10 degrees with 20 degrees of gun elevation. You could choose a 150mm derp cannon, the howitzer, which doesn't have that great of a penetration of 121mm, but does do a lot of derp damage. So this is the AP round. This is likely the gold AP round, like the KV-2. And here is the high explosive round. So it does uh, 910 damage per shot. Yeah, it could be like a E100 levels of a derp cannon. 121 millimeters of penetration for AP is not that good. It does not tell me the reload time, so I expect it to be about 20 seconds or so. Yeah, it's 
use high explosive. So let's compare the stats with the average of tier 8. Yada yada yada. So the closest I could think of is a KV4, mostly. Let's see, the power to weight ratio average should be about 12.7 for tier 8. This has 9.9, .9, which is below average. Hull Traverse is slightly better than a KV4, but way below average by almost 8 or 7-ish. So, yeah, Hull Traverse is not that fast. Top speed is way below average by almost 15 kilometers per hour. Reverse is also below average by 4 kilometers per hour. Terrain resistance is above average for hard, above average for medium, and above average for soft. So they could shift in muddy terrains or swampy lands. That's decent. Turtraverse is way below average, the same as a KB4. So 5.2 degrees per second below average. That kind of sucks. But it has a better view range than the KV-4, so... Holy crap, I did not know the KV-4 has 350 meters of view range. So it's above average view range. The same with 110, I believe. Okay, that's decent. Radial range is 700 meters, so standard for high tiers. The armor is... Slightly better than the KV-4. So this thing is more like a fortress. However, the side armor is not as good. 105 millimeters rather than 150 so side armor is not that well protected let's take a look at the gun characteristics so as we can see the penetration is below average by 20 millimeters holy crap that's kind of bad like the t32 which shares the 105 millimeter with the t29 Damage is below average in alpha, slightly. DPM is a little bit above average, but that's not a good point. Accuracy is below average by 0 0.02, so that kind of sucks. Accuracy is also not as good paired up with the aim time. So the aim time is almost 0 0.2 seconds above average. So... Yeah, accuracy and aim time does not help with this 120mm cannon. Gun depression is above average by 10 degrees, so this it's pretty good. 20 degrees of gun elevation is also above average. You can also carry a derp gun. So the OI-120 is basically a heavily armored version of a KV-2 if you use the derp cannon. If you don't, it's a heavily armored version of a KV-5. So it has better penetration than the KV-5. It could ram, but it's not as mobile as a KV-5. So this thing is a bunker. Uh, side armor is not that good, so you could go side scraping, but... 105 millimeters of side armor is not going to protect you, as well as the KV-4's 150 millimeters of side armor slope that you know if you angle it 45 degrees that's pretty crazy so this thing is a bunker it's it's rather not surprising based on the gun characteristics the gun is the same weapon it looks like as the tier 7 version of the oi so it's like the t29 shifting into the t32 that's why i got disappointed with the t32's main weapon and when you just use the same weapon a tier higher, it's kind of disappointing. So this vehicle looks rather not as interesting as the vehicles before it in the tier 5 through 7. So uh, it's fair, but it feels like a T32 all over, uh, all over again. So deja vu. Oh well. And there you go folks, the OIs of tier 7 and tier 8 of the upcoming Japanese heavy tank line branch. Now the tier 7 OI-100 feels like an upgraded version of the Mito-100 which could go ramming based on its power to weight ratio and the weight of the vehicle. But the traverse is not as good so it's not as shifty as the Mito-100. Now the OI-120 at tier 8 
is basically sharing the same characteristic or relationship with the OI100 that's the same for the T32 with the T29. So the main weapon system is the same and you're playing with the same weapon at a tier higher. So that's kind of a, the disappointment I feel with the tier 8 version. However, it does have the armor so it can bounce a few shots. The armor is not that good against tier 9s and tier 10s but if it's top tier in a tier 8 match against like premium vehicles such as the IS-6 or KB-5 which has about 170-ish millimeters of penetration yeah it's a bully but you could go against like tier 9s and tier 10s which could penetrate 250 millimeters so armor could troll if you're at a distance which reduce the drop off for the penetration based on distance over range but yeah it's okay it's a bully if it's top tier but if it's not it's a gigantic target i guess so you guys for watching this video hope you guys enjoyed it and coming up soon is the type 2604 2605 with the lower tiers so i'll probably wrap up the leak video series about the japanese heavy tank line branch but thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys next time peace